Thank you, Miss Mays, and thank you, Joe. That was beautiful. That was. Good morning, everyone. It is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord today and to be with all of you. Amen. First and foremost, I give glory to God because he definitely is worthy to be praised. Amen. And I thank my wonderful family for their constant love and support. Thank you, Reverend Hill, for that great message. And I don't know if you know this, but Jennifer Hudson was a vocal student of our pastor, Dr. McGlynn. And even Jennifer even gave her a greeting on her uh, 90th birthday. And so that's, that's really cool. I knew you knew that. You just tied that in. That was really smart of you. Yes, yes. Um, thanks to the United Church of Hyde Park uh, for warmly welcoming Holy Vessel into your home today for this service. Before I begin, I would ask if you please bow your heads for just a moment of prayer. Dear God, we come before you humbly today, thanking you for all you are to us and for all you do for us. Thank you for being our light in the darkness, for empowering us when we're weak, and for being a very present help in trouble. Remind us, O oh God, that it's not enough to simply wait on you to move, but we must fervently seek you through prayer and by reading your holy word. We never can name all the things we are thankful for, but never let us fail to mention that you loved us all so much that you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross that we may have abundant and everlasting life. So though it may be simple, we truly say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. And all of God's people said, amen. This Thursday, we will celebrate Thanksgiving, parades, yes, turkey, stuffing, candied yams, corn, football, more turkey, ham, cranberry sauce, green beans, macaroni and cheese, football, more turkey, mashed potatoes, spinach casserole, pumpkin pie, apple pie, football, and then more turkey. Yes, it is a day that we give thanks for being able to stuff ourselves with food, watch a lot of television, and then fall asleep because we stuffed ourselves with food. Uh, well, I am pretty sure that the pilgrims knew nothing about parades or hot air balloons or football or television, so I'm guessing those are things they were not celebrating during the first Thanksgiving. In 1621, they were giving thanks for surviving the harsh weather and for being able to grow a successful harvest thanks to the help from the Wampanoag Indians. Think about it, brothers and sisters. The pilgrims held a celebration to thank God because they were happy to be alive and to have something to eat. How thankful are we for those simple things? just in case some of us sometimes take advantage of our blessings or don't remember them well, I'd like to take a few minutes to remind all of us why every day, not just Thanksgiving Day, we happily should say, thank you, Lord. I have three awesome children. My daughter Lauren is here today. But when they were much younger, every once in a while, they would get a sense of entitlement they talk or behave like they were supposed to have very nice things. It, it would be on those rare occasions that I would calmly, yet strongly, remind them that there are only four things they need in order to live. I can see Lauren smiling through her mask. I would tell her, food, water, clothing, shelter. That's it. You don't need a Nintendo Game Boy or Beanie Babies or a Nerf gun. You don't need to eat at McDonald's and get a Happy Meal or have Lunchables or chicken nuggets in the shape of animals. And you sure don't need to wear designer clothes endorsed by celebrities. I would remind my young children to be thankful to God for what they did have. I invite you, if you care to do so, to look upon the Gospel of Matthew in the sixth chapter, beginning with verse 25. This is what Jesus Christ said about these topics. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought of your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, 
nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are they much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For all, after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Amen. So that I make it clear when Jesus is saying, take no thought, what he's actually saying is stop worrying. He's not saying don't think about it at all. He's saying don't worry about it. Indeed, the New Living Translation of verse 27 is, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? I don't worry about food. I enjoy food, obviously, but I'm not a fussy eater. Maybe it's because I've served meals out of a food truck for a line of poor, hungry people, a line that stretched four blocks long. How can I not say thank you, Lord, every day for being able to open my refrigerator and seeing it full of food that I picked out? Well, if it's healthy food, my wife picked it out. Um, but it's there in the refrigerator. There but for the grace of God, I could be hoping that there's a meal available in that food truck by the time I get to it. And I know from experience that when you are really, really hungry, a fried bologna sandwich can taste like the best four course meal. I know somebody knows what I'm talking about. Now, if you recall the second thing I told my kids that they actually need is water. That's something that's become very important to me. Uh, five years ago, I dealt with passing many kidney stones. Not fun, people. I do not recommend it. It has become a necessity for me to drink water throughout every day. I have a tankard right here. I am so thankful that I can get safe, clean water to drink anytime that I want it. Water.org says one out of every nine people on earth does not have access to clean, safe water. That's about 844 million people, and you're not one of them. We ought to say thank you, Lord, every day that we are not one out of the nine people. Amen? Now, when it comes to clothing and that need, it becomes, it really became the lifelong work of my mother to get me to wear something that was not my favorite color, blue, and that had fancy patterns. Sorry, mom. I know she's watching in Florida. I'm wearing blue. That's what I like. Um, for much of my young life, I wore a button-down collar shirt, blue jeans, and gym shoes. Yes, I was a nerd. Um, but as an adult, I'd be happy to wear the same type of clothes every single day because I'm still a nerd. Well, maybe I'd trade the blue jeans for khakis. It really tells you that I'm a nerd, my goodness. But I say, thank you, Lord, for what I have because I have been on mission trips to Central America where little boys wore girls' dresses because that was the only clothing that was left. People fashioned shoes out of twigs and grass. So the next time you're worried about having something nice and clean to wear, or you see a commercial for the latest fashion, and you say, I got to have that. No, you don't. You don't got to have that. You ought to say, thank you, Lord, that you have something nice and clean to wear and that you're not depending on the donations from a clothing drive. The fourth thing that I would tell my children that they truly need, shelter. 
Back in 2005, the United Nations estimated that 100 million people worldwide had no home at all. Habitat for Humanity stated that 1.6 billion people lived in inadequate housing. And Water.org says that one out of every three people on Earth does not have access to a toilet. Sadly, somebody listening to me right now, either here or online, knows what it's like to be in one of those situations. This evening, after you go to the concert or you, you go home, you'll be going to a house or an apartment that has a working toilet, a sink, a tub or a shower, plus heat and locks on the doors. Let me tell you, for many people in the world, that's a luxury. Those, there are plenty of reasons to say thank you, Lord, for what you have and where you live. That you have a safe and a secure home to sleep in at night. I have been to parts of this world where people live in garbage dumps. They make their home out of the refuse that they live in. You ought to say, thank you, Lord, that you have a nice place to rest your head this evening. You know, there are many things beyond the four things I would tell my children that they truly need that we should thank God for. Allow me just a few minutes to mention some of them before I close. Finances. Now, none of us may be super rich, but finances is one of the things Jesus taught us to not worry about. If you've ever faced having only a few days to pay a utility bill or the rent or the mortgage or the tuition or your car note, what happened? If you somehow seemingly miraculously got the bill paid in the nick of time, I bet you said, thank you, Lord. I know you said, thank you, Jesus. And if you didn't have the finances to make the payment on time and you had to move or maybe even you lost your car or you had to leave school, what happened then? Somehow you earned or were given the money you needed to be sitting right here this morning. Somehow you made it through. And some of you, for some of us, losing what you had ended up with a nicer situation than you were in before. Amen? Another thing to say thank you, Lord, for is our job. Some people love their jobs. Other people just kind of tolerate their jobs. And on those days when you're not feeling properly appreciated or compensated, think about what the Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians 4. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Amen. Your job may not be everything you want it to be, but when you're there, try to make it every good thing that it can be. Because not only will you bless yourself, you will turn to end up blessing other people as well. We need to say, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for our jobs. Amen. And for those of you retired, I'm envious. Okay. Enjoy that. First Chronicles 1634 declares, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Dear people, there's no way I can mention all the things that we have deserving of that we should say, thank you, Lord. But please let me mention one more thing. Health. Health. My family knows, church members know earlier this year, I was lying in a hospital bed with several uncomfortable tubes coming out of my body. That was the result of a surgery that I'm still recovering from now. But every day, I tell you, every day, I say, thank you, Lord, that my health is so much better than it was just seven months ago. Many of you have experienced a physical challenge or suffered a health scare. Maybe you were diagnosed with a disease. Maybe you had to undergo a risky surgery. But if you can hear my voice this Sunday morning, that means you made it. 
Amen? You overcame the illness. You defeated the disease. Some people who suffered the very same thing that you were suffering from didn't make it. But you did. That's got to be a reason to say thank you, Lord. That has to be a reason to say thank you, Lord. Psalm 95, 2 declares, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Brothers and sisters, we don't have to wait until the fourth Sunday in November to do that. You heard Matthew chapter 6, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, told us to stop worrying so much about the matters of this world. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, food, water, clothing, shelter, finances, jobs, health, all these things shall be added unto you. What awesome evidence that every day we can say, thank you, Lord. And if you believe that, I ask you to say it right now. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Amen.